everybody. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, wherever you may be. I'm Tyler Shores. I am the Think Lab Manager at the University of Cambridge, and I wanted to share a mini session, which I'm entitling Brief Thoughts on Screens and Wellbeing. I hope everyone is enjoying the Better Learning Leadership Conference so far, and this will be a little bit of a mini break and give you some food for thought in between the other panels you're doing. So. Um, before I jump into things, here's a, a little bit about myself and why I'm talking about this topic with you all. Uh, my background before Cambridge is in the tech industry, so I worked at Google in the, uh, the main office and helped to run a program called Authors at Google. Uh, Authors at Google was essentially TED Talks, um, for anyone familiar with those, before TED Talks became a thing. So you can see all of our author and expertise uh, expert videos for free on YouTube. It's a big collection at this point. And I also manage social media at Stanford University just before joining Cambridge. And I manage the, uh, the Think Lab program, which is uh, basically a startup that applies research to real world problems um, throughout our university partnerships. And we're up to a lot of exciting things right now. Um, more to the point, uh, my, I'm also a researcher here at the university. So my research is on how we read our reading habits uh, between screens, say on an iPad or a Kindle, compared to printed books, and also the role of social media and our attention span, which has certainly become a topic nowadays that we're all spending more time than ever before on screens, and also what that might be doing to our attention spans. So based on my research and my past uh, 15 years of work experience in tech and education and all these things, I thought I would share a couple of tips with you. Uh, one of them is just sort of thinking in general about digital distractions. These are all things that we're familiar with in our everyday lives. Notifications, um, the, even the way in which we browse content and all of these things can be very addicting, very sort of, uh, uh, they can suck us into these sort of things. And I'm not anti-digital distractions by any means. Um, a word of caution though, thinking in terms of how we actually go about doing these things. Uh, one of them, if you can see the GIF at the bottom left-hand corner of my screen there, if you've used Instagram or TikTok or Reddit or Twitter or any of these things, um, I would say be cautious about these things. Um, this uses infinite scroll, which is the idea that we're just constantly scrolling, scrolling, scrolling on our phone. And that tends to um, tends to make us zone out. And generally over time, uh, rather than making us feel better, it seems like it makes us more tired and a little more zoned out and not necessarily um, feeling good by the end of it. So something to consider. Um, in a larger sense, I'd want everyone to think about rethinking our screen time versus our screen quality. And in this case, that would mean thinking not so much about how many minutes or hours we're spending on any given thing, but as I said in the previous slide, for example, there's a difference between reading an article or um, talking to someone over Zoom, over a video or these sort of things, things that kind of lift you up and educate you as opposed to um, you know, kind of the equivalent of digital junk food, the, uh, the things that we browse just for the sake of browsing that kind of maybe upset us or um, stress us out a little bit. So think in terms of quality rather than quantity and then uh, as a general principle, and that might help us. I thought this would be an appropriate topic too, since we're all tuning into this conference uh, via video that uh, I think by now a lot of us have, have had the experience of, when I say Zoom fatigue, of course, I mean really any video fatigue, and there's a number of reasons why. The BBC has a, an article that kind of goes into a little bit of the psychology of why this is, but there are a number of reasons why being on video uh, does tire us out. Um, even just being aware of that, being aware of the fact that we are on camera, so we're, we're constantly um, uh, not only looking at ourselves, what do we look like right now in the mirror? Do I look okay? Do I look too old? Um, but also simple things that are a little more hidden, I think. So one of the terms that I've kind of created recently was our Zoom listening face. Um, the things that we don't even necessarily think about, but something to at least reflect upon when you're on camera listening to the rest of these conference sessions is like um, thinking about our face, like, you know, just being conscious of like, what do we look like when we're looking, when we're listening and are other people listen, uh, looking at us as well? Um, these are all hidden costs that kind of tire us out over time. So even just being aware of it. Um, I don't know if anyone else has shared this experience, but certainly there have been articles. Here is one from the Financial Times about the new 20-second rule. It's the idea that we should be giving our eyeballs a break for being on screen so much. 
Um, there's a number of things that factors that go with this. One of this is um, blue light exposure. So um, there's a good amount of science and research right now that shows that um, it affects our, our sleep, our level of fatigue, which we'll talk about um, in a couple of slides. Um, having warmer colors, that is instead of the white, bright blue light on the left-hand side here, we've got the warmer oranger um, that might be a little easier on our eyes and just needing to, you know, simple everyday things um, such as just maybe we need to, um, you know, our eyes are basically like, you know, little uh, focusing camera lenses. So we need to be able to, when we're looking at something really small and up close, as opposed to seeing something far away, all of these things tire us out during the course of the day. Um, I've had to, uh, I, at least in the last month, I've noticed a few more articles about um, vision problems um, since the pandemic, since last March. Um, I've had my prescription changed, but who's to say, right? I can't blame COVID for just simply getting old. Um, so there's part of that too. But all of the time on our screens has um, certainly taken a toll on us physically as well as emotionally. So it's important to think about these things. Speaking of physical and something to keep in mind for the rest of your conference while you're sitting, um, there's a lot of uh, information about links between uh, you know, how active, how sedentary we are, um, our posture, what our bodies are doing while we're on screen. So this includes, so for example, I, I have my smartwatch, which I use to kind of remind me every hour or so to stand up. Um, I feel like that helps. Uh, but simple ergonomics, the fact that many of us um, maybe are hunched over a screen for long periods of time. And this also tends to wear us out emotionally and physically. So keeping, you know, little reminders like the chart I have on the right-hand corner here, top right-hand corner about um, what it's doing to our neck, our shoulders, our back, all of these things. So keep in mind, these are just some of my favorite stretches that I'll do in between, uh, in between sessions or during Q&A for some of the things you'll be attending. Um, keep some of these in mind. Get your body moving around a little bit. Uh, it has both physical and uh, mental well-being benefits for you. So um, hopefully little reminders. I'll wrap things up with a few practical tips. One of my favorite apps, for example, is called Freedom. What's nice about Freedom is you can kind of schedule the amount of time that you want to spend on an app, uh, say YouTube or Twitter or what have you, um, ahead of time so that you know that you only have a finite amount of time that you're allowed to be doing this. This is your um, distraction budget for the day or the hour. Or if you really need to get something done, you can block all of the apps across all of your devices. It makes it harder to cheat. Um, I wrote a blog post about how I use this for reading and researching, which you can get at the link below, but I recommend that. It's also good for scheduling breaks. Freedom isn't the only app that does this, but what's nice is just realizing giving yourself screen time free breaks um, can have an enormous benefit. Now that the weather is getting nicer, at least here in the UK, um, there was a big study in Nature not too long ago about, um, for example, saying that about 15 minutes a day or a cumulative 120 hours a week in nature, anything green that gets us up and out of, you know, um, behind walls from behind screens has benefits for us physically and uh, emotionally. So keep that in mind, too. Um, Conferences and meetings are part of our way of life right now when it comes to video, but we have to like schedule in time for those breaks from these digital mediums. A uh, couple of articles I thought I would share. There's a new book by Alex Pang, who used to work at Microsoft, talking about basically the cognitive benefits of rest. And rest means a lot of different things, a lot of different ways to do it. But essentially, one of the things I would mention is just that our brains need rest. We need rest in order to be productive. Um, we probably probably all heard this in one shape or form or another. Um, I thought I would bring it up specifically in the context of screens, like screen information consumption, being online. Um, we do need rest from this. So consider it. Consider it during your weekends or um, evenings and these sort of things. And I'll leave you with one final note, speaking about evenings, is um, particular time of day, nighttime. The research is quite clear now. Here's one from Harvard Medical School about blue light. So blue light is anything that you might see on your um, your iPhone, your, um, you know, your Samsung device, any LCD screen that is emitting bright light. It's essentially like shining a light bulb in your face, which is actually horrible for our sleep. Um, there's more about the science in a book that I highly recommend, Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. Um, it talks about just how important sleep is for our quality of life, 
our productivity, how our brains work. For anyone that has um, is uh, a parent and maybe has uh, kids or teens, anyone in our age group, impoverished sleep caused by um, screens at nighttime is bad for us. It is horrible for younger generations. Uh, their brains are still developing and then shortchanging them on sleep is actually um, long-term, very harmful thing. So something to keep in mind, really being aware of what we're doing at nighttime. Uh, the big practical tip I'll leave you with is um, for my own research, I've often heard many, many people will say, what's the last thing they do right before falling asleep? Um, touching the phone, doing something with the phone. I use my phone as an alarm clock. Um, I would recommend, because that tends to be a slippery slope, do you ever just check your phone just to use the alarm? No, of course not. We don't do that. Um, we use the other things, but consider an alarm clock for an alarm clock. Uh, see if this makes a difference for your sleep quality, your own sleep quality, your kid's sleep quality, and all of these things. So I think I will leave you with that. Hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. I hope you find um, some of these tips useful. You can get in touch with me over email or Twitter or Instagram. I usually share articles that I find interesting. Instagram a little bit more about um, books and foods I eat, but at least on Twitter, more informational educational content. So I will leave you with that. Thanks for tuning in and I hope you have a good rest of the conference.